So today we'll be taking a look at No Escape, one of the most infamous ransomware samples of the last year. And as we do that, we'll also talk about malware analysis techniques and things you can learn about how you identify malware. So first off, we're going to see why this ransomware is so feared. It's pretty simple. You run it and starts encrypting your data pretty much immediately, disables user account control, but the main lights and sounds are gonna come on soon. So we're going to have a complete takeover of the desktop background, as well as obviously our data being jumbled up. Also, what I've noticed is since it does all the encryption at once, it takes a very heavy toll on the system. So the system's going to be very laggy while it's running. You have the autoplay feature telling us we have uh, a new drive, the ransom note, of course. I can hear my fans ramping up in the background. And there it is. It took a moment, but we have the no escape ransom note and also our desktop background has been changed. Your network infected, your files encrypted. Long have we waited? Oh wait, they can't rhyme yet. But you saw the ransom note that's plastered everywhere. And if we take a look at our documents, everything is of course encrypted. And it's the same story for our pictures and pretty much all the data on this computer. It's still very slow to respond, probably because it's running in the background. Let's see if we can find it in Task Manager. Well, it seems to have vanished now. If we take a look at CPU, no trace really. I don't see the encryptor process, but it's too late to stop it now anyways. Now, one of the reasons this group is annoying is because they have their own blog as it were on the dark web and they like to publish the companies that refuse to cooperate with them and as you can see they have a very professional looking website these ransom groups often see themselves these days as pseudo professionals they like to keep a reputation appear official now if we look at an analysis of the file itself i want to go through why it's so difficult to detect some of these ransomware samples day one and also some concepts that might be interesting from malware analysis perspective so everybody can learn more about how we recognize malware so first off a lot of engines use what we like to call strings now these are basically just words inside the data of the file so just like you can open a text file you you can also open an exe file and it will have words in them of course those words are not designed to be readable they're more computer instructions but if you read the computer instructions sometimes they're traces of instructions that you might recognize so for example here we have cryptography crypt gen key and so on the challenge of course is these are all pretty boring strings because they're there in any application that has anything to do with cryptography if you looked at your steam executable it would also come up with these strings because it has a login that uses cryptography and so on. There was a time when you could look at a ransomware sample and you could see strings like ransom note.txt or you could read the ransom note text. Now of course these samples are quite obfuscated which means unless you analyze it and look deeper you're not really going to find anything. So let's have a deeper look shall we. So we can see some of the assembly instructions here. This is the machine code your computer gets but before that not to scare you with technical details it's a very simple thing you can do to look at any file to tell at least if it might be suspicious and that property is called file entropy what this indicates is how packed or obfuscated or jumbled up the data inside the file is now typically if you are publishing an application there's no reason for you to jumble it up so much so very high entropy is an indicator that the creator does not want you to know what's inside the file of course, that doesn't mean it's malware. It could be just to hide the code. But typically, malware files will have a higher than standard entropy. Like this one has 6.8 on a scale of 1 to 8, which is very high. Now, this file property is something you can find in various analysis applications, tools like PE Studio. Now, you also have the file signature. So this file is not signed. And you have what's called a code cave, which means there are unused bytes that may be used to inject custom instructions later. There's also padding, which is just adding a bunch of extra 
stuff to the end of the file to make it appear larger. And then you have the imports. Now, programmers don't typically write all the code for every single application. They like to borrow code from existing libraries. And that's what this tells us. This tells us what this program is trying to import in order to do what it's trying to do. So for example, it's loading libraries using the connect function, using the create file function, create process function, crypt acquire context. So if you understand to some extent what these functions do, you can get an idea of what this application might do. So for example, we can tell from the create file function that it's going to make some changes to our files. So if this was not an application that was supposed to do that, it might be suspicious. Socket tells you it's trying to establish some kind of network connection. And this is why as well, you need to have a knowledge of basic programming, computer science, if you want to get into cybersecurity, because after all, malware is just software that does something bad. And if you can't understand software, you can't really understand malware that well either. But again, I would love to say that if you're a great programmer, you could just detect this malware by looking at these functions, but it's not that simple because for example, reg open key, it tells you that's going to open a registry key on your system. Almost every application is going to do that. Any kind of setup is going to do that. So it doesn't really help in determining if something is malware or not. So it takes a lot of experience to notice malicious patterns by analyzing applications, which is why even today, even with all the AI and and everything. Often new malware is not detected and it takes an experienced malware analyst or researcher to look at it and then create signatures for it. Now you can look at a lot of these file properties in tools like PStudio or using the functions for the PE file library in Python, but we're able to get all of this analysis data in one place thanks to Malcor, who sponsored this video and just asked us to try using their platform. Another way we detect malware is using YAR rules. So this is kind of like a programming language for hunting malware. As you can see, we have a rule that specifies certain strings, certain things found inside the machine code, and then this pattern can be used to detect other samples of the same ransomware, even if they're different. You can, of course, write these manually. It's just like any other program programming language, but you can also generate them using a tool like Malcor. So if you're a researcher and you've been looking to get your hands on these tools and maybe some of the other analysis tools are too expensive, you could give Malcor a try. They have a free version which you can access using the link in description. But another cool thing is they have much more reasonably priced plans for students and people just getting into this industry. So show them some love for sponsoring this video. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. No Escape is uh, undoubtedly going to continue to be a major threat threat in the US and the UK. So do like and share this video if you want to share this information. The best way, of course, to avoid any kind of ransomware is to have an effective backup strategy and also good behavioral detection that detects encryption behavior. We've done tons of tests to show you which solutions might be able to stop that. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.